All right. So replacing kitchen cabinets. Do I need a permit for that? Yes. So you do. By the way, by the way, I always use. I always use. I always use my brother. It's Alex Sens' house. So Alex Sens was doing a kitchen and bathroom renovation at his house. No, I'm just playing. Anyway, so um, the bottom line is anything, but most people in single family houses, they don't pull permits for those things. Why? Then the kitchen and bathroom. So some peop So if you are replacing cabinets and countertop, you could get away with doing that without a permit, but when you start taking up the backsplash and the sinks and moving things around with electrical and plumbing, even though it's even change, out, change outs, technically it requires a permit. Will it become a problem when you sell the place? Probably not, but if you're planning on doing impact windows tomorrow and the inspector has to come in the house to inspect the screws in the impact windows and he sees a new kitchen, it might. But again, single families, people do kitchen and bathroom renovations all the time, and just because they're done without a permit doesn't mean they're not done right. I think your concern here more than anything else, Ben, is the movement of stuff. Like sure. If, they, if we take a kitchen sink that's on the left yeah. side of, uh, of the kitchen and move it four feet down, correct. Then it's a problem. Correct. That's, that's where, you, where, where, you, where you have to replumb the drain line. Also, as an owner, you can if the house is homesteaded and it's less than I think a hundred thousand dollars of work, which most are, um, you can pull an owner builder permit. So if you ever wanted to act as your own contractor, not build a pool or do electric, um, they will let you pull. But they won't let investors do this. Why won't they let investors? That they won't even let they won't let properties that are open that have open and expired permits the the city or county sometimes they won't even mess with them because they know that an investor is just looking to flip and cover and, and do whatever they so they're they're here to protect the residents and consumers and they have like a maximum amount of money that you can um, work with if you're a homeowner some of them have a maximum amount um, so some of them say anything under a thousand dollars, but then cha changing a toilet they want a permit for. So the thresholds are different everywhere. S similar for a roof repair, over 25% of a roof they want to see a re-roof permit. Below 25%, it's a roof repair. But the cities can do anything they want. They could take it further than the building code and further than the legislation. So they have the ability to do those things. But generally on a house, I see people pulling permits for roofs. I see people, now if you take down a wall, it becomes different, but just for simp simple kitchen and bathroom remodels, where you're supposed to, I also understand why people don't. Because again, the permitting fees and the engineer plans and everything are gonna cost more than, than the shebang. And the time. And the time. So the time for the permits, they could take anywhere from three, you know, 10 to 15, 20 business days, depending on the plan review back and forth. Also the time of the people working for you, or if you're doing, like I attended a home shop, um, a Home Depot workshop, and they were teaching people how to put up the wet board in the shower, then put the top, and by the way, Home Depot, it's the do-it-yourself store. Every, every product says, check with your local building department if it requires a building permit. We're just selling you supplies. But again, I, I need to get a, a, so if you're doing a shower, you need to get an underlayment, a framing inspection. You need to get a, a do-rock inspection before you put on the tile. They have to inspect the plumbing. So all these things are concealed. So I can go behind the wall and go in the closet and see if there's do-rock there, or I can open up, say, the shower valve or the little like metal plate behind the head. I could see what's behind there. But I'm always looking to see what's behind there because if the city, I, I at least want to let the people know the existing condition of the property. Um, even developers um, down in South Dade, they've been putting drywall behind showers and new construction. Just a huge oversight. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Cool. All right, so perfect. This is in the village. Oh, this is a good roofing underlayment. I didn't know this was on this slide, Tyler. This is great. So this is so this is the layers of the roof. And feel free if you guys you know, want to grab any food, we're very casual. So this is, this is the underlayment of a roof. These are the tin tags. This is the paper. And all of these things have to have correct spacing. So this was a 
2012 code violation in West Park, duplex, owner was incarcerated. Incarcerated. They couldn't deal with this. We had to deal with this on the HUD. They didn't have the proceeds to handle it. So I usually don't like to do that, but this was a hardship situation. Um, so the city, if the, if the shingle roof that only has 25 years left of life, if that roof didn't have any life left in it, the city wouldn't let me permit it. They'd say, you gotta pull, do a new re-roof. Shingle roof, $12,500. Um, this was a situation where we were able to pull up two four by four areas with our engineer, get an engineer letter for the roof, and the city closed it out. But again, the city wants someone to take responsibility for the work because the property is going to change ownership. So they want their fees. They want someone to take responsibility of the work. And if the work wasn't inspected, they want an engineer to put their seal on it. I am not an engineer. I work with engineers. I follow the instructions of engineers. But we can't just, like that screen enclosure in Miramar, we can't just alter the screen enclosure. We can't change an engineer's design as contractors or as lay people or residents or homeowners or anybody. This is a Biscayne Park reoccupancy inspection. On the other side of this is brand new kitchen, brand new bathroom, everything. I mean, this was, this was, um, this was, do you know Alejandra Espinoza from Univision? This was actually a house that she sold. She has many houses and she is in California most of the time. And so she let contractors come in there. They told her she was, they were getting a permit. They never got any permit. She got a violation. Seven months down the line, she has to sell the house. And so the kitchen bathrooms are renovated. The reason why I give you a picture of the staircase here is because they removed the staircase. So it was open and it was near the kitchen. So the example I like to use there is sometimes the city could come in and if things are small and we can fix them and time is an, of the essence, I would put the staircase railing there because the inspector's not going to look at the kitchen and say, that looks good when there's violations around it. So if it's really small and easy, because I know, oh look, every seller, it's a hardship situation, no matter who you are. So I know that if I could do some certain things that might help push the process along, I do it. If we don't need to do it, I leave it alone and we see what the city says. So this is where you have to be flexible with the seller because they're in a hardship. How much time we got, Mo? We're here to one. Cool, yeah, we're here to one. Okay, yeah. okay next slide. So how do I find open and expired permits? A lien search. Oh, no, okay. All right, so I'm gonna do this real quickly. A lien search. A lien search is going to include in this pamphlet right here for reliable, a lien search is going to include all these items. So any, anyone who has any questions about what's included in a lien search, next slide. This is what the front page of a lien search looks like. It's a beautiful, reliable cover sheet. Bam, bam, bam. Property tax, a, a lien search is usually 40, 50 pages. Some commercial ones are 100, 200, 300, depending on how many, depending on, for example, Miami Gardens. Then you gotta pull up Miami-Dade County because there's unincorporated Dade. Then the water for the city of Weston. Before Weston incorporated in 96, where I was raised, it was unincorporated Broward County. And it was the city of Sunrise for what, all this thing. So anyway, so this one sheet, that's beautifully laid out is gonna tell you everything. It's gonna tell you if you need a reoccupancy inspection, it's gonna tell you if you have any open permits, it's gonna tell you if any of those are violations or liens. And then this also says about property taxes, things that are gonna be prorated on your settlement statement. I wanted to wake you guys up because this is really what I'm all talking about. Yeah. Next one, move forward or I'll do this quick. So why is a lien search important? We already went through that. It provides homeowners and real estate professionals with information. This is an interesting um, zoning video. Uh, can we watch it? It doesn't quite fit in with the rest of the neighborhood, I'll put it that way. And the president of the condo 
Association for these units near the trailer is not thrilled with his neighbor. Mm. She has done nothing but been a nuisance to our community. The woman who calls this trailer home is Christina Clothier. If I had to actually choose, this would not be my ideal. Despite living next to a public stretch of beach, Christina owns two plots of beach property. She inherited them from her father. Decades ago, private homes dotted the beach. Now, most of the beach is public, and Christina wants to keep it that way. She wants to sell her land to the city, but they're not buying. What do you want to say to Deerfield Beach? Do the right thing, which you should have done years ago. And that is? To purchase the property. In 2017, Christina says the city placed these trash and recycle cans on her property. I'm paying ridiculous amount in taxes. And if the city wants to use the property, then buy the property. So Christina says she put up no trespassing signs. Deerfield Beach Code compliance then fined her for unpermitted signs and unpermitted <laughs> placement of signs. They're trying to wear me down. It's not going to work. Christina racked up $49,880 worth of code violations, which she has not paid. The city is now suing Christina, arguing it's authorized to foreclose on the code enforcement liens. Christina's attorney disagrees. Instead of buying it, they are attempting to mm -hmm. take it through these unfounded, uh, known, known uh, baseless code violations. In a statement, the city tells 7 News, code violation complaints are investigated and enforced, and the city would prefer that the property owner address all outstanding violations and bring the property into full compliance. You have a government entity saying, no. So we can cut it here. So I know time. So, so again, the city, the city enforces zoning. The city wants... This is an old use. It's a yeah. non-conforming use, which it's like three units on a two on a duplex property, which means you can't bring it into compliance. There happens to be a condo association nearby. It's one of the one of the not in my backyard uses. What happened there? I'm not sure. It's okay. It's 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 not in one of. Oh, poor David. It's not, <laughs> it's not in one of, it's one of the not in my backyard uses. My aunt lives in unincorporated Dade right by Aventura. They're doing Airbnb and, you know, nobody's watching after it. So again, all of these things, the local governments are looking to regulate whenever they see money. So in Miami Beach, you can't do any Airbnbs because the Lowe's Hotel pays tens and thousands of dollars a month in taxes, fire alarm fees, everything to keep. So your use of property changes when you open it to the public. If it's just you as a single family or a homeowner, it stays. When you start using it to the public, when you start selling things from your property, when you start operating a business, like not as a realtor, not as a realtor just doing paperwork and things from the house, administrative or clerical, when you start doing hair, when you start grooming dogs in your single family property. The city, does, so the city enforces zoning code. Zoning code is signs, landscaping, zoning codes is colors of houses, things like um, outside HOAs, that kind of stuff. So you have the building code and you have the zoning code and the zoning code is left up to the city. There's also, um, I use an attorney, Jason Gordon, he's phenomenal. Whenever I have an issue with the city, he goes to bat. So I mean, Again, he sees if the lien is not recorded properly. He's been involved in land use cases with religious uses. These are all constitutional rights. So some of them become legal issues, but they all amount from warnings, code violations, and at the end of the day, the city wants a property in compliance. The cities are not looking to, and that, that's a particular situation, but the cities are not looking to foreclose on the property. They want to collect the money, they want to get the property into compliance. The city's not looking to become a property owner, but they're going to want to hold the property owner accountable for their violations and the violations of previous owners if those haven't been brought into compliance. Everyone says, hey, Ben, I bought the property like this. Hey, Ben, my neighbor's doing this. My neighbor's doing that. They don't care. They're looking at your property right now. 
and you're looking to your property inspection company and your realtor who sold you the property and your title company who closed the property. That's all reflection on you guys, the agents. And that's why Erica from Stewart Title brought me here today because I could be a resource. And I, uh, I'm here for you guys, Erica. Thank you. Yes. So, so pretty much, um, I brought Ben because sometimes you guys have listing, uh, listings, and you go into getting this listing, and you're like, wait a minute, uh, there's, I think that there's an open permit, or I think there's a lien, or there's an attachment. You know, just call me, Ben and Reliable. They can actually do a pencil search um, that is going to cost you fifty dollars. Okay, and then you can see what the property is going to have. Same thing if you have a buyer and they're willing to buy the property, but what they really want to know what's happening on that property before they close. They just pay $50 for the pencil search and we get it done. Whenever you're already in contract and we order the lien search, we're going to give them back those $50. But at least you are ahead of the game. So I think this is really critical right now. That's why I brought Ben, because every single contract that I'm getting has a lot of issues. So it does not matter if the property is cash. Okay, if it has a lot of issues, your client really wants to have clear title. So that is the most, uh, you know, right now we really need to do our due diligence and make sure that we are not at fault, that we're doing our homework, because trust me, if we messed up, who are they gonna call? The title company, it was the realtor's fault because you didn't tell me, you didn't tell me there was an open permit, you didn't tell me there was a lien, it was your fault. And people like, and Erica, to piggyback off what yes. you're saying, people just wanna know, sometimes they wanna know how much it will cost to resolve. Correct. People want a peace of mind. Yes. Because they want to know what they're getting into, especially yep. if they're using every last resource Correct. in the hot market to become a homeowner. And so guys, again, what... I don't know. know at all, but call Ben. He can resolve the issue. If it's going to cost you five grand, he can lower the fee or work his miracles with all his contacts. Yeah. But I think that sometimes, you know, the listing agent or buyer's agent, you really want to have people that you can call and say, hey, this is what I found on the property. Can you help me? So, um, you know, that's why I brought Ben to talk to you guys today about the lien search, open permits, violations, because I think that we all need it. And especially now that we're getting a lot of foreigners with cash, with a lot of money coming from all over the place. So we really want to be prepared of what's going on. Thank you, when Ben. I, uh, thank you, Eric. And when I worked in the building department in Weston, over by your office. Yes. Realtors were coming into the building department. They were asking me who was the contractor from 2004, trying to contact that contractor three to five days before the closing. And even if the contractor is in business, good luck trying to get them to do the right thing when they've already been paid because all the liability falls on the homeowner. So you would expect the contractor would do the right thing. They always don't do the right thing and they don't do the things in the time that we need them to. So thank you guys for listening today. And uh, if you want to see videos like this to our viewers, please, please check out our Instagram, our Facebook, check out Title Girl, check out Reliable Lean Search, check out Boss Construction, because what I do is I post really, really little, I try and post 50 second videos about things that are happening in the field, information that you could take home with you, so you know more about us and we want to know more about you. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right.